Hello again everyone, it's me Matt, really appreciate you stopping by on today's video. We're discussing the beautiful F117 Nighthawk, specifically not a review today, but more some updated information as to what's going on with this incredible stealth fighter. Now as many of you are probably aware, the F117 Nighthawk has been retired from service since 2008, and a sad day for us all when we heard that it was to be. But unfortunately, you know, future has taken over the grasp of this aircraft with the F-35, F-22 Raptor and other platforms out there today, and unfortunately she's just no longer required. But the interesting developments that are happening lately indicate that maybe something else is going on in the background of the United States Air Force and the US military as to why this aircraft has actually been seen flying again. Again. Yes, it is an interesting development, something that I honestly didn't think would happen. I thought these aircraft would just be mothballed until the next concept of, you know, interdiction, long range strike missions are required, similar to that of Baghdad. We all see the footage of those beautiful fighters coming in, dropping those uh, GBUs on positions in Iraq back in the day. And, uh, you know, when they were mothballed, it was a sad time, but we are seeing them fly, and this is the new development that's just happened. So, those that were driving on the highways near Miramar Naval Base in San Diego uh, recently actually witnessed a strange scene. Two of the planes that were, of course, an unusual shape and painted black, landing on a runway, famous for being settled on the Top Gun film. But this jet is certainly not an F-14 Tomcat or an F-18, it was actually the F-117 Nighthawk. The first jet that was invisible to radar in history. But what did the US Air Force aircraft at the Marines base do? What were they doing there? What's more, why did they keep flying despite being retired in 2008? The official answer really doesn't exist since the US government does not admit that Lockheed Martin planes are even in fact active. But it has become increasingly evident that the Pentagon has used some of the units to conduct military tests and exercises. Miramar, for example, hosts the training of Navy fighter pilots and has aggressor aircraft used to simulate enemy fighters. And nothing better than evaluating tactics and maneuvers with a jet that is extremely difficult to detect. In service since 1983, the F-117 was the precursor to stealth technology. Developed by Skunk Works teams and also responsible for the SR-71 spy plane, the Nighthawk used a fuselage concept with the faceted surfaces and radar absorbing material to remain undetected. In addition, both engines had covered air intakes and exhaust fans with cooling systems. The V-tail, like that of the single engine Bonanza, was chosen to be hidden behind the wings. The unusual design means the F-117 is only able to fly because it has a fly-by-wire control system, being unstable in various flight conditions. The United States Air Force only operated around 59 units of the attack aircraft, although designated as a fighter, its role has always been that of a bomber or different variants of roles. When it decided to retire them back in the past decade, the Air Force stored them in a pattern known as Type 1000s, which it plans to keep them in able to fly again mode. Almost all of the remaining units were eventually preserved at Tonopa Air Base. It looked like the end for the F-117's career, but as of 2017, some fighters began to be seen in the desert regions near Edwards Air Force Base in California again. Last year, rumors emerged that the United States Air Force would have used some Nighthawks in attacks in Syria in 2017, but that information has never really been confirmed. In May 2020, two of the planes were seen next to a KC-135 tanker, denoting a very unusual activity. Until then, these sightings occurred sparsely in populated areas. So the landing of two F-117s in San Diego may be an indication that the Pentagon no longer plans to hide from the public that Wobbling Gobbling is back. But what does this mean? What are they being used for? And why are they being brought back into service so publicly? Well, it's safe to say these aren't really new aircraft, they're not a top secret asset anymore, and a lot of the technology has been superseded by more modern day systems, but its concept still works. And for enemies that are out there today, it still has a lot of capability. Um, and why would you risk placing upon, you know, the F-35 or the F-22 or maybe long range strike bombers into tactical situations where they don't need to be, where you can use a dated, although still working, fighter aircraft? I think that's the basis of what they're looking at with this aircraft, and also a lot of the time, as I said before, there is a lot of opportunity for this aircraft to be used on an op for basis. So basically, having an aircraft test the uh, you know defensive capabilities of certain anti-aircraft missile systems of the United States, and that makes complete sense. Why don't we send one of our best stealth fighters back in the day against our own forces and see how they hold up? Uh, air defense technology is developing at an extraordinary rate, and especially now with the developments in you know. Uh, 
uh, eastern parts of Europe. There's a lot of discussion about jamming, radar uh, capabilities that are out there. And the Air Force is looking at different ways of testing their capabilities. And to me, this seems the most logical option as to why the F-17 is kind of being brought back out of the ashes a little bit. Uh, it's an aircraft that has never really been fully retired, so to speak. As I said before, uh, the Type 1000 capability allows these aircraft to be kept in storage, but they are capable of being able to bring them out very quickly and put them back into service. And I, I, th I think it's incredible that they're actually bringing them back out. Um, it's one of the most beautiful aircraft in the world, although strange in its concept. Uh, its combat record is very, very impressive. Um, as I said before, you know, the uh, strike missions in, in Baghdad and Iraq were the, uh, you know, the epitome of uh, strike missions for the time. And I know some of these aircraft have a very impressive kill ratio um, compared to some of the more, you know, traditional aircraft such as the F-16, F-15 and uh, A-10 of the uh, same conflict. But what else are we going to see for this aircraft? Are we going to see potentially them brought back and upgraded, updated? I don't know. It's going to be something interesting to see. Uh, and if you do have more information or you've seen your own sightings of these aircraft, I would love to hear from you. If you live near Miramar and you're seeing these F-117s, do you have any pictures or we wish to share? Uh, please let me know. I know there's a lot of pictures floating around on Instagram right now of this aircraft uh, in that particular situation flying around there. Uh, I would love to see one up close and personal flying and uh, it would be cool to see one just you know, on the deck as well. I'm, I'm not sure if many of you out there have seen one on the flight line before. I know there was some static displays back in the past that some people got to see them, but I'm sure under strict confidence of going nowhere near actually being able to go in the, you know, cockpit or see around the damn thing, because it, for its time, it was pretty, uh, pretty hidden, and it was probably the nation's best kept secret. I mean, I know uh, people who I've spoke to about this jet before, about, you know, pilots uh, disappearing for weeks on end, never letting their families know where they could actually be or where they're going or what they're doing. Uh, very, very interesting, and you know, for its time, extremely secretive. You know, the technology at that time was just, you know, totally revolutionary. The Russians uh, were taken back by it completely. That this was something that was able to be brought into the battle space, and you know, maybe they are also bring them back into the flight line to develop a more modernized version, the F117. That would be extremely exciting uh, to use this more of a, a test bed or a benchmark for other technology that may be out there. Uh, to create a modernized stealth fighter that is even more capable as say the f-35 or other stealth aircraft out there and i know many of you are screaming at the screen right now saying matt the f-35 isn't true stealth yes i get it you can define stealth in many different ways and there's a ton of discussion we could have about stealth and i won't pretend to myself that i know a lot about it because i don't and it's not something that truly fascinates me um but it's cool it's cool to see that the f-17 is flying again uh, the beautiful black Dorito <laughs> going around the skies. So if you do have any information on this, please let me know in the comment section below. But it's exciting stuff, and I, I'm kind of intrigued to see what else we're going to see in the future coming from this aircraft dotting around the skies. Thank you for joining me on today's video. Hopefully uh, you enjoyed learning a little about this aircraft and what it's up to nowadays. Um, if you did enjoy, please leave me a like and click the little bell by the subscribe button so we can notify next time of any videos I produce. Uh, if you want to check out my Facebook, Discord, and Instagram, they're all in the uh, description box also. And if you want to send me anything via my PO box, you're more than welcome to as well. Uh, thank you again for joining me, everyone. I hope you have a wonderful day, and I'll catch you on the next video. All the best. Bye-bye.